got a chance to introduce John last time. It was awesome. John Bush was born and raised in Austin, Texas, where he had become a notorious community activist. You guys follow his work? Yeah? yeah? Pretty badass. He lives on a small farmstead with his fiance and fellow rebel rouser, Catherine Bleich. Put up for Catherine. And their daughter, uh, Aliana. Aliana! Aliana, there we go. The family raises chickens and maintains a community garden with several friends. John has dedicated over a decade to promoting the ideals of free society through grassroots mobilization campaigns. Lots of stuff. I know you guys already asked you if you watch it. You said yes, but spread his work too. This guy's awesome. Oh, by the way, speaking of spreading information, if you don't know this, we are live streaming this. And the live stream has been posted on the Facebook event page in Anarchy and NYC. So in the age of smartphones, go ahead and put your smartphones out and share the link if you would so that everybody else can join in and get a chance to see John talk and everybody else. So if you go on the page, it's on there. It's Caleb's channel. There's a lot of numbers. I don't know what the hell it is, but go there and you'll find it. Back to John Bush. His overall goal in life is to find freedom for his family while exploring and building sustainable and autonomous communities. He is currently hosting the Rise Up Radio show weekdays on LRM FM and is the executive director of the newly formed nonprofit the Center for Natural Living. Give it up for Mr. John Bush! demonstrate the value of voluntary cooperation and natural living in the areas of sustainability, family, and health by creating educational media and helping families to fulfill their basic needs. And you can check that out at centerfornaturalliving.org. So it's good to be back in NYC, even though it's a state as hell hole. It's okay, there's a lot of good people here. There's a lot of culture. There's a lot of fun. There's a lot of parties. And there's always a lot of anarchists and libertarians that show up at wonderful events. So, I've spoken at the past three Liberty Fests, which Ian and others have organized, and each time there always seems to be some sort of controversy associated, especially the first couple of times. First time it was controversy with myself. I intended to speak about 9 11 Truth because I was coming up into New York City and back in 2002. That's right. Back in 2002, I caught a documentary by one Alex Jones, love him or hate him, he's got a lot of information out there, and uh, I began to question the official story of what took place, and I wanted to tell part of that as my story. The people that were on the organizing board of Texas for Accountable Government got upset about that. So I ended up talking about how people got upset about me wanting to talk about how I questioned the government. Seems natural for libertarians or a libertarian political action committee. The next year, someone said, oh, you better not go to Liberty Fest. There's going to be 9 11 truthers there. And a couple of the big headliners backed out. So I talked about how it's important for us to be radical in the pursuit of freedom and bold in the pursuit of truth. And wouldn't you know it, Anarchy and NYC, it's not Liberty Fest, but it's pretty much affiliated. There was a little bit of drama that took place once again. There was a speaker that uh, dropped off the lineup because he didn't appreciate big tent anarchism and didn't want to be associated with some certain forms of anarchism. And there was some uh, radical leftists, anarcho-socialists, anarcho-communists, anarcho-syndicalists, whatever you want to call it, probably a collection or a collective of all the different groups. And uh, they threatened to disrupt the event. And in fact, apparently they contacted the venue and were saying, uh, we don't want this person to speak. And also threatened to come in here, the anti fog crew, which apparently disrupts basically fascist events. They're against capitalism. So today I want to talk about the most recent controversy and I want to impart three different goals, three different themes. First of which is I'd like to reconcile anarcho-capitalism slash voluntarism, libertarianism, the consistent form of libertarianism, not the constitutional form, <laughs> with anarcho-syndicalism, anarcho-communism, anarcho-socialism, or any type of community-oriented anarchism that is antithetical and is not happy about capitalism or what libertarians represent. 
Second goal, our theme I'd like to impart, is that we have the power to create the reality that we want for ourselves, our family, and our community. It just takes believing in yourself, believing in your crew, and doing it. The third goal I want to impart is to bring a, a practical idea of how we can get from here to there. Both ANCAPs, voluntarists, and anarcho-socialists, anarcho-syndicalists, etc. Some practical steps on how to get from here to there. I'll start by my particular position. I would consider myself an anarchist, the general form. I believe that all human interactions, associations, contracts should be voluntary and mutually beneficial. And I reject forms of coercion which force people to do things against their will. Sounds pretty simple, but unfortunately it totally blows people's minds when you bring it up to the, the average Joe in this country. I believe that every service that's provided by government can be more effectively, efficiently, justly, and equitably provided by either the market or the community. And I believe often ANCAPs fail to recognize community solutions to our common problems. It always doesn't have to have a dollar sign next to it. Mutual aid, the gift economy, barter economy, it doesn't necessarily have to be through the private means of production for profit, although there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. But as we should see that others in the anarchist movement, they don't like it. They don't even like us identifying as anarchists, which really kind of caught me off guard. I think anarchists would be like, yeah, you know, if you're against aggression or hierarchy imposed on people, come on in. We need all the help we can get. There's a lot of statists out there, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently there's statists within the anarchist movement as well. So back when I was a political activist about three or four years ago, well, we worked in Texas for a common government, and last before then, I used to have this little mantra, it's humanize, harmonize, localize. Humanize talks about getting your ass out from behind the computer, going to meet your neighbors, going to meet politicians, looking them in the face, Look them in the eye with a firm handshake. Harmonizing was about uniting elements of the liberals and conservatives, Democrats and Republicans left and right on common issues, encouraging them to set their differences aside and work together on common issues like we shouldn't have police officers administer blood withdrawal. We've got the ACLU and the Republican Liberty Caucus to work together to draw up a resolution, which didn't get passed because politics doesn't seem to work very well. And localized, of course, was to keep it local, local communities, local solutions. Especially if you're a libertarian, I would hope that you would reject the central talking anarchists here, but the libertarians that may be in the crowd or on TV, I would hope that at least you would reject the central authority of the federal government if you are participating in political activism and focus on the city, the state level, because that's where it's at, that's where people have authority and influence. I come to find whenever I get into direct action and whenever I became more of a full-fledged anarchist, that the same philosophy and the same mantra applies, humanize, harmonize, localize. But this time, I think that there's more power in uniting the radical elements of the left with the radical elements of the right, which is kind of an oxymoron to consider anarchist right, in my particular opinion, because right has to do with conservatism and conserving institutions and usually conserving the Constitution. So I started reaching out and working with a lot of folks in the Occupy movement and a lot of left anarchists in the city of Austin who had a much greater history and a bit of activism than the newly formed libertarian movement that organized after the 2007 Ron Paul campaign in Central Texas. And we actually haven't had much strife because we have set our differences aside and worked on common issues. One of them is the Peaceful Streets Project. A, a large part of the Peaceful Streets Project activist contingent is in fact occupiers. One of our best activists is a communist, although he's slowly starting to see different realities when it relates to communism. So in exploring the need to unite left and right, whether it's political activism or direct action activism, I came across Carl Hess's essay, Anarchism Without Hyphens. Maybe some of y'all have heard of Carl Hess. He defines anarchism, he says in his essay, there's only one kind of anarchist, not two, just one. An anarchist, the only kind, is defined by the long tradition and literature of the opposition. The position itself is a person in opposition to authority imposed through the hierarchical power of the state. I would like to expand it. We could leave out the state. I would say any hierarchical power that's imposed upon free individuals. That's what I would call anarchism. But nonetheless, I see the state as the biggest threat to our individual sovereignty and to our effort of collective liberation. This is a term I like to throw in there to appeal to those on the other side. He goes on to say, anarchism liberty does not tell you a thing about how free people, free people will behave or what arrangements they will make. It simply says that people have the capacity to make arrangements. So I hope that this sticks with people in realizing that we ought to unite as anarchists 
And if someone on the other side rejects private property, I would hope that those who are adherents to private property would respect that they don't want to organize a system like that. And I have a feeling that the ANCAPs and libertarian anarchists actually are okay with that. I, I would hope that you would want to use violence or come invade some anarcho-communist or anarcho-syndicate and force your private property form of capitalism upon them. But unfortunately, it seems like a lot of left anarchists that are opposed to capitalism would do just that to capitalists. Yep. Some of them seem like they wouldn't even be willing, they wouldn't be, they couldn't rest at ease or at peace knowing that there's capitalist transfers of wealth and there's private ownership that makes reductions in that damn pesky wage slavery they like to refer to it as in the boss worker relationship. Like, we'll chat a little bit more about that. But the fundamental question, fundamental question boils down for me is what I just said. Are you willing to allow me, my family, my community to exist peacefully in a manner that we see fit according to our own principles, our own beliefs, our own views, our own economic system? Or would you inflict violence or try to eradicate what it is that we're doing? Now on capitalism, I hope the ANCAP see that's not the be-all, end-all. As I said before, there are alternatives. The gift economy, mutual aid, and I would hope that ANCAPs would be as tolerant of the other side of the aisle. Because I don't see the tolerance being from the other side, especially surrounding this movement. So let's chat about the other side. And let's go ahead and assume that capitalism is exploitative. Don't shoot me now. But there are people that subscribe to the labor theory of value. And if they want to, by all means, let them. Of course, Austrians and capitalists subscribe to subjective theory of value. But let's assume that capitalism is exploitative. I've had these debates on Facebook. One of them was a thread about why the person that was going to speak backed out. And somebody said, well, what happens when the anarcho syndicalist union wants to rise up and take over the factory? And the owner of the factory calls in his private security force in the state and crushes them. I said, man, you got an anarcho syndicalist union. Form your own factory or your own cooperative. Why the hell not? Why must you continue to insist on what this other person has built? Uh, I, I think that's wrong. I think capitalism, absent the coercion of the state, is mutually ben beneficial voluntary associations. Now there's a problem, which I'll give to left anarchists, in that there's limited choices. For example, in China, you're going to be a peasant working in the field. Oh wow, now there's a job where I get paid a dollar to an hour. This is an improvement in their condition, and in many instances they voluntarily choose to change their situation in order to benefit their lives. But there's a lack of choices, and in my opinion, that lack of choices doesn't come from capitalism, but it comes from that institution we all know as the state, which has the authority and the ability, the alleged authority, to force people to do things against their will. And the state, unlike other institutions, gets away with that. Just people have their heads up their ass and see it as illegitimate. So I say, moving on to my next theme, which is we all have the power to create the reality that we desire. If you're opposed to capitalism, show me something better. Create an alternative. We're both opposed to the status quo and both know that it's going to take risks in order to create our ideal society. But I think if we unite on one common united front, essentially leaving people alone who don't agree with you as long as they don't interfere with your ability to live your life according to your ends, then that's great. And when it comes to the barriers to entry that limit choices of workers, a lot of that has to do with the capitalists using the state in order to put regulations and expensive licenses and stuff like that. So I think it's, it, if we could at least encourage a air of toleration. I would hope that left anarchists could realize that if somebody wants to go do capitalism over here, by all means there's enough room for all of us absent the state and all their national parks and stuff like that, for us to create our own types of systems. And I think we should work together to do just that. Because people are really worried. They say, well, they think that just because they have a certain belief in the way things ought to be, that that's the way things are, but they're not. And I think it's important for us to realize that. Conversely, just because the way things are doesn't mean that's how they ought to be. Just because the way the reality exists doesn't mean that's the way it ought to be. So I think it doesn't mean that's the way things have to be either. We can change the world. We can create the reality that we all believe in. And some of mine, just to, to finish up, to impart uh, five little tactics that everyone can engage in, anarcho-capitalist voluntarists and anarcho-syndicalist communists and socialists alike, we can geographically concentrate individuals that have a like mind. This takes place at the Free State Project. Shout out Free State Project, Astro Blue Wings Liberty Project. Shout out to Astro North Carolina. Strong contingent here in the house tonight. And my personal favorite, Long Star Libertopia. Got a lot of great stuff going down in Central Texas, including the Antonio Beaver. Geographically 
concentrate, there is strength in numbers, and if we continue on the path that we are, many people are beginning to opt out and practice peaceful uh, non-compliance and resistance. There's going to be tension. And when there's tension, it's going to be very important that you have a crew surrounding you. Second, we need to work to undermine the legitimacy of the state and the minds of the masses. There's a problem. The difference between public criminals and private criminals is it's kind of difficult to shoot back when they're public criminals because they have the legitimacy of the state. And until the ideas that people share in their mind about arbitrary authority change, if you do shoot back, you'll probably end up dead. And the consciousness of the average American, they might even think it was a good idea because there's been marginalization campaigns taking place for years and years and years. But if we work to undermine the legitimacy of the state in the minds of the masses, when people st finally start fighting back or at least resist the death of themselves or their friends, the public will say, you know what? That guy was in the wrong. That cop was abusing his authority. And they'll begin to lose faith in the institution of monopoly police. And shout out to the Peaceful Streets Project for helping to do just that. I think we need to build alternative institutions. Let's not let's stop talking about liberty and freedom and the theoretical, although we need to do that, as Bob Murphy pointed out before. Educate the masses and it'll swell the ranks. Ron Paul did a hell of a job doing just that. So shout out to Ron Paul. Event. All right, the next thing, I think we can participate in the counter-economy, or the barter economy, or the gift economy. Great alternative institutions, Bitcoin, uh, 1964, pre-1964 dimes, local currencies like Mountain Hours, MTNHours.com, what Wayne Walton's doing, shout out to everything he's doing. Let's create alternative institutions of education. Homeschooling cooperatives, they exist all over the place in New Hampshire. Texas is a relative free state when it comes to homeschooling alternatives. Malcolm X said, only a fool would allow his enemy to educate his children. So if you don't think you have the ability to send your kids to private school or public school or public school, talk with some of us. Talk to myself or Antonio Vino. We'll do what we can to help provide alternatives and pick you up with some folks in your community. Alternative institutions of health. Let's help one another become more health conscious. There's a lot of people that focus just on freedom from coercive government. They fail to recognize that they have the ability to be free from chronic disease, fatigue, and all sorts of illness. You just got to take care of yourself and talk, stop eating shit. Alright, and then uh, also grow your own food, that's very important. Get yourself some sort of food, throw up some gardens, check out Square Foot Gardening, it's a great resource on that, and also how to grow more vegetables. Grow your own food, there's no reason why you shouldn't eat, shit's going to hit the fan real soon, and even if it doesn't, it's an ultimate way to build community, build a more healthy lifestyle, grow your own food. Alternative institutions of communication, shout out to Pirate Radio, LRN.FM, on all sorts of different networks. We were inspired by Court of Crime 411. We set up the Liberty Bell down in Austin. It's an emergency alert line. You got the ham radio movement from the Patriot movement. There's a lot to learn from these, these older guys that are way into ham radios and all sorts of different stuff like that. Alternative institutions of justice and arbitration. If there's a conflict within the Liberty Movement, I hope that you guys don't go to the court and threaten to sue like it's happened before. And too often, I peace figures, motherfuckers! I think that we should go to independent arbitration. This happens in New Hampshire all the time. I think they're really leading the way up on that front. They have people that are identified as arbitrators. And finally, the most difficult, the most controversial is alternative institutions of defense. Whether it means purchasing a firearm if you don't already have one, learning to use it proficiently and safely, whether it's forming Liberty Bell Network, where you commit yourselves and you commit yourselves to your friends and, and other people in your community that you'll come to their aid as long as they come to your aid. I think this is absolutely important uh, because we need to stand up for ourselves, we need to defend ourselves. The strength in numbers has a lot to do with that. Alternative institutions in defense. Two more things. Engage in hardcore philanthropy. Break the, the mistaken notion that libertarians are a bunch of greedy, objectivist assholes. And let's demonstrate that voluntary cooperation and mutual aid is far more beneficial to solve our common problems than the status that shit known as government. And finally, I think it's best that these happen in, in a progression. But finally, when we've had so many numbers, when we've delegitimized the state in the minds of the masses, when we built the alternative institutions necessary to replace the state and compete with the state, when we've engaged in the hardcore philanthropy necessary to outdo the marginalization efforts to make us look like a bunch of crazy lunatics that are violent, it's time that we opt out in mass. And it's difficult. I filed my income tax, and I did not appreciate it one bit, as Caleb said before. But I'll feel a lot stronger standing up with multiple people. Same thing about renewing my driver's license a couple years ago when I had fought and did not want to do it. We had a car that wasn't registered for two or three years, but we sold it, got a new registered vehicle. It sucks. 
But if we all stand up and unite together, we'll find that there's strength in numbers, there's strength in unity, and there's strength in truth. And as a movement, and Paps, and anarchists on the left, we have all three of those things. All it takes is us standing up, believing in ourselves, and knowing that we have the power to change the reality of what we see. And we're going to be okay, and I think we will find liberty in our lifetime. Peace and freedom, ladies and gentlemen!